AVC, I'm back. Uh, what a vibe with Fred, uh, Big Star 1000, and his Gimme Tens. Um, I've been so busy. Um, but his last one on indie rock, I just had I had to respond to. Uh, I was in my 20s between the years 1983 to 1993, which was uh, really the the rise of indie rock. I, it's my and that's my era, you know? and so uh, I've got a bunch of records from that era that kind of uh, yeah I can vibe with indie rock. And, you know, there's a problem in defining it because it's, 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 it's the convergence of punk and uh, sort of an anti-disco kind of rise of just meat and potatoes, rock and roll. Um, that confluence, you know, um, you know, I guess R.E.M. would really kind of define indie rock in a lot of people's minds, although they were never really very indie. I mean, for a hot second, they were, they were indie, and then they were quickly picked up by A&M, um, their subsidiary IRS. Um, but, uh, I want to show this record kind of start off with the Feelies, their 1980 LP on Stiff. Um, you know, this is kind of uh, television influenced, Velvet's influenced, um, you know, kind of punk, but trying to get back to melody and, um, and just rock. Uh, this is their first record, and uh, the drummer here, Anton Fear. Uh, went on to work with Bill Laswell and uh, formed the Golden, Golden Palominos. Um, and his drumming makes the rhythms on this. It's called Crazy Rhythms. Um, their later records with more conventional drumming are a little bit smoother. Uh, but the Feelies were really influential on R.E.M. And, uh, and then R.E.M. kind of opened the door for all kinds of, uh, you know, meat and potatoes rock that was cool and interesting and punk infused and fresh uh, and uh, the replacements have to be uh, you know, Paul Westerberg was a brilliant songwriter uh, this is their uh, I'm not sure when this is from 84 or something like that on Twin Tone this is an original uh, this is a great record melodic you know again kind of edgy and punky but Melodic and rock, just rock. Saw that, saw these guys live a few times. They were a drunken mess, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, can't talk about indie rock without Sonic Youth. Uh, this is a 1987 record, Sister. Uh, this is the original with the uh, uncensored cover on SST. I'm going to show a bunch of SST records because. That was the indie label of that period for sure. And this was Sonic Youth's, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about Daydream Nation. Um, yeah, this is a record before that. This is where the, their sound really changed towards uh, accepting, you know, they, they wanted to rock. You know, they started out as an arty, no wave kind of noise thing, but they always had bigger ambitions. And this is where they really start to get their sound together. Yeah, this is cool. OG. Can I really do this in 10 minutes? Let's see. Um, so yeah, the SST label had, they had everyone, you know, in this record. The Minutemen, Double Nickels on the Dawn, in 1984, double album, uh, the CD emits like 7 or 10 songs or something. Um, these guys were, were awesome, you know, because uh, they just they did everything from jazz to noise to punk to you know but great songwriting. D Boone, the loss of D Boone that Christmas was heartbreaking because they were they had something really special together and that rhythm section of Mike Watt and George Hurley had a, had a funky jazz swing. I mean that was a killer rhythm section. This record. Uh, Punk, I don't know, it's in Indie. Indie. Another SST band that is really interesting, the Meat Puppets. This is Up on the Sun. 
Uh, this is 85. Uh, they made a couple of records before that, but this is where they really got their sound together. Uh, the first record's a sludgy mess. The second one has a real like crazy horse kind of vibe. Um, but here, it all comes together. And again, a real funky rhythm section and a, and a, a jazz feeling, you know, not, you know, I love this stuff. I've got all, all the meat puppets, SST stuff. Uh, another band, this was, for me, it was a local band, Dinosaur. This is their first record on Homestead. Uh, notice it's not Dinosaur Jr. Uh, I thought it was ridiculous when that band of dinosaurs, you know, that San Francisco hippie band sued them. As if anyone would confuse this with the dinosaurs playing their... Anyway, this is OG, great cover, uh, great songs, again, like that Neil Young kind of country thing is, is creeping in. You know, not afraid to be uh, melodic and uh, pretty at times, but roaring guitar. Yeah, I saw these guys a bunch of times uh, when I was living in Boston. Uh, Uh, I was going to bring up Who's Could Do, uh, they're another important indie band, but um, this seemed a little bit more interesting or appropriate, Squirrel Bait, Skag Heaven, this is their, their, well, they had an EP out before this, and then this out, this is their one and only album. Uh, these guys had that kind of Who's Could Do melodic hardcore thing happening. Um, but this is a great record, kind of went nowhere. Uh, this is a reissue, actually, on uh, Ducks Through Cigar, originally on Drag City. I had an original, I sold it because I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, this is good stuff. This is... Um, uh, most of the band went on to form Slint. Uh, Big Star 1000 showed Slint. It's obviously an important indie band, uh, moving into post-rock kind of thing. Uh, but here you got your meat and potatoes rock. With a little hardcore edge, but great melodies, great songs. It's awesome. Uh, can't talk about indie without talking about Guided by Voices, um, which we're listening to the CD actually. Um, and I'm going to show this. If I had to choose one Guided by Voices record that I had to take with me on a desert island, uh, it would be this. One. Some people it would be B Thousand. Uh, some would be Alien Lanes. I, to toss up with Alien Lanes, but this one, uh, Under the Bushes, Under the Stars, they're getting away from that four track sound, and it's a little bit more produced. Steve Albini worked on it, uh, Kim Deal worked on it, and then Pollard took it back to his, you know, four track and fucked with it. So it's still got, it's still got that lo-fi thing, but there's, um, there's a power and punch to the sound that's, um, uh, and, uh, and the songs. I mean, this is not a bad song on here, and it also shows Pollard's profligacy is unbelievable, prolific. There's a whole EP in here, um, and a whole bunch of four more songs, I think, that aren't even on the packaging on this original CD, um, are on here. You know, it's, that's just the way he is. He makes a lot of records. Uh, another band you can't talk about without, if you're talking about indie rock, is Pavement. Uh, Fred showed uh, Slanted and Enchanted, which is great. That's their first full length. Uh, I kind of like this one better. This is their second LP, uh, Crooked Rain, Crooked Rain. This is an original on Matador. Uh, it took me a while to get used to Payton. Um, speaking of bands that I used to like, used to hate, but now like, or. Uh, this was the record that finally turned me around on paper. Um, great. All right, I'm just under the wire here. Um, by the time I kind of lost interest in, you know, indie rock, uh, this was kind of what I was into. This is palace music, which is, uh, uh, you know, Will Oldham. Yeah, he's made a lot of records. Calls himself a bunch of different names: Bonnie, Prince, Billy, and stuff. Um, his first stuff was under the rubric of uh, Palace Music, or Palace, and uh, this is my favorite of those 
Records. Be the last blues. This is also on Drag City. It's an original. Uh, produced by Steve Albini. Um, you know, his voice, the whole country affect and stuff, it kind of doesn't work for me all the time. Uh, but on this record, it comes together. It sounds like a band playing a room, and the songs are, are good and convincing. And I've already gone over. Um, this is from uh, 1995. Yeah, that's about right. Um, I could go on and on and show more records, but um, it's been fun. Those are 10. Uh, 10 and 10 minutes and 48 seconds. Thank you. Love